Tesla built the famous Wardenclyffe facility in the early 1900s. But unfortunately, he lost funding and creditors demolished the tower before he could operate it at high power levels. The lab had a 200 kilowatt generator, so the tower could have run up to about 200 kilowatts output. Earlier this year, the curators at the museum there asked if I could bring a Tesla coil to their celebration of Tesla's birthday on July 13th. This seemed like a great opportunity to finally visit the historic site and make some detailed measurements of the tower foundation that I've wondered about for years. Clearly the best Tesla coil choice for this event would have been to simply rebuild Tesla's original 187 foot tall Wardenclyffe Tower. Unfortunately, the world seems to have no interest in doing so. However, I've been working on the design for a twin 121 foot tall tower for lightning research and I've just completed a fully functional one-third scale prototype for engineering studies. It's nowhere near 187 feet tall, but at least it can run in the 200 kilowatt range that Tesla intended for Wardenclyffe. This new prototype can also telescope down to fairly compact dimensions. So I loaded the entire tower system into a trailer, hooked up the truck, endured all of the hazards of the open road, and showed up at Wardenclyffe on July 11th. Arriving at 5 Randall Road. the back entrance to the Wardenclyffe Center. There's the old Agfa building with the Wardenclyffe main building on the other side. This is the main building at the Wardenclyffe site. Looks like it's still in pretty good shape. The ornate wrought iron that was on top of the smokestack is still here. It's in storage in back of the building. And over here is the remains of the tower foundation. Most of the uh, concrete and stonework is still here. Looks in pretty good shape. Uh, we'll take a detailed look at that in a minute. And over here is the equipment that I brought. There's my 97 Ford F250 with the 7.3 liter diesel. It's got the factory towing package and 411 gears, which allowed it to pull 11,000 pounds of Tesla coil up over Sherman Pass at 8,600 feet. This was the smallest trailer I could come up with that would contain both the 40-foot coil and the 20-foot, 25-foot diameter toroid. The three o'clock position on the tower foundation seems to be the best place to do unloading as it provides kind of a natural loading ramp for the trailer. Here's the entire foundation ring. It's about 100 feet in diameter, or near, nearly so. It consists of these discrete blocks of nice, I think it's pronounced, and connected in between by grade beams of concrete. Here's one of the 16 column foundation blocks that supported the 187 foot tower. Note the steel anchor stud there, slightly left of center, that secured the columns to the block. These are about two and a half inches in diameter, and they used to stick out about 18 inches. Someone cut them off, for safety I guess. Tesla probably wanted these metal anchors grounded as well. So, I'm hoping that they still have some subterranean connection to whatever elaborate ground system he built for the tower. To test this, I'm going to run a ground wire from every anchor stud, connect them all together in the center, and then measure their total impedance to earth using a fall of potential method. Several accounts of Tesla's grounding array mention a 120 foot deep shaft with four 100 foot iron pipes forming radials that stretch out below the water table. Whether any of these underground conductors remain is anyone's guess.
but at least the exposed metal on the surface is still largely intact. The fall of potential measurement for the foundation acres indicated less than an ohm. This was surprisingly good, given that Long Island itself is essentially made out of sand. It could be that the foundation anchors are electrically connected to something that runs pretty deep, perhaps even down to the water table. By comparison, the 8-foot copper grounding rod that we drove in measured about 1,200 ohms, over 1,000 times worse. However, the ultimate test will come when we try to drive some real power into the ground. Here's Alex Woodward, caught by the local newspaper, unloading the trailer and installing the 20 kilowatt drivers on the coil base. And here's the fully retracted coil base with the top electrode ready to be installed. Finally, here's the fully extended coil tower standing in the center of the original tower foundation. And here's the tower ready to operate with blue clearance lights added along the old tower foundation indicating the strike range.